will people ask you how long did it take you to develop that piece or how long did it take you to become an artist? Well, the answer is all my life and it's, it's an all-involving uh, growth. We moved to Florida uh, from New York uh, in 1976. Uh, here in Florida, I took a job in the local utilities and been working in an engineering field for the last 30 years. During that period, I still had the opportunity to be creative, but I missed the art, I missed the painting, I missed the sculpture. Uh, I still did a little bit uh, at night when I could, uh, or on weekends I'd sketch pictures on the beach, uh, but it was, it, it was something that was always in my soul. It wasn't until about 15 years before I retired. I just, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And the one thing that came back to me was my art. I had that passion that was still there. So I went to the Dunedin Fine Art Center here in uh, Florida and took a couple of classes. I took a drawing class, a couple of painting classes, and actually the enthusiasm just exploded. And the art that I was producing even after all of those years was pretty good. And at that point I decided I wanted to make this more than just a hobby. I wanted to learn more about the art. So I went back to school and got another degree in visual arts from Ecker College. And that just further blossomed all of the energy and all the passion I had in art. I was in with taking classes with younger folks, uh, which gave me a whole different perspective on things because after 30 years of working in an engineering field, I was back with artists, uh, young people that were, had a different point of view. One of the true blessings for any artist is to be able to have an environment that you can work in where it's, when the inspiration hits, you are able to actually go and, and either draw it, whatever it is, or paint or create. If something comes to me at two o'clock in the morning, I can just walk outside this, into the studio and start working on, on that, that idea. And it's been so rewarding and so refreshing. One of the concerns though that I had was missing the interaction with the other artists. So in order to enable me to stay involved with the arts, I went and uh, became a board member uh, for the St. Pete Arts Alliance. I also stayed in touch with the Dunedin Fine Arts Center and, and I'm a board member, an advisory board member for the Dunedin Fine Arts Center. But my relationship with the arts in St. Petersburg, especially the Arts Alliance, has given me the opportunity to continue to meet with the other artists and, and talk about what we're doing and how we're doing it. During my experience in Ecker College, um, I was influenced by the, the Chinese artists uh, one in particular was Zawaji, and his art was, was really abstract, but it, it, gave, it had emotion. And all of my art today is, is, comes from the soul. Uh, it's, it's a feeling that I get when I'm painting or sculpting. And it it's all revolves around the, the tradition of the Tao, where everything in the world it has to have an opposite. A lot of my paintings and what inspires me is things that happen in life. I could be driving down a road and looking at a, at a sign and it would be a particular statement on that sign. Or I look in, at a, a shape or I'll be talking to somebody in a conversation. Uh, some of my work just recently was based on, on a Facebook conversation I was having with someone who I didn't even know who they were. So that led me to start really thinking about where our society has gone today and we have all of these friends but no real relationships. So I started a, a series of paintings called Faceless. So it's Faceless in the City, Faceless on Saturday Night. And it just gives me the opportunity to start making a statement about where we are in today's society with, with, without relationships. Where's my art going in the future? Uh, this is a question that I, I'm constantly asking myself. And it really revolves around the, com the community or my environment. Everything changes. The world changes, the world situations change, and that all influences the type of art I do and where I'm going with it. So on a daily basis, um, I'm, I'm constantly changing. I'm changing materials, I'm changing thoughts, I'm changing everything. Um, if you looked at my art from where I first started, even 10 years ago to where it is now, it is, is totally different. And I think that's very important for the artist. You have to have that growth. 
So to know exactly where my art is going to be five years from now, I don't know, but I know it's going to be different from where it is now. It's exciting. Uh, not knowing exactly where it's going, but you know it's going to go, and you know it's going to be different. And that's very important. It's very important to me, and I think that's very important to most artists. Uh, when you really think about it, I think that's one of the things that drives us. It, it motivates us on a, on a daily basis that we really uh, don't know where we're going to be tomorrow, so we, we are creating now for what we think is going to be tomorrow. And that's what makes everything so exciting, that's what makes art. And that's where people react to your art. Like I said, five years from now, I don't know exactly what I'll be doing, but I know I'm going to love doing it. Um, and I hope that people uh, like the work that I'm producing, and I'm sure they will, because I know that when I'm producing it, I love producing it. I love the work and creating it.